How are the gap? January the 19th. Damn, it really feels like time is flying. I don't know about for you, but here, um, probably because I'm enjoying myself somewhat, <laughs> despite COVID, despite what's going on in America. <laughs> it's, uh, it, it just seems like the days are flying by, guys. Number 19, or January 19th, I should say. Bankers. You mean central bankers? Bankers often lend money on character. <laughs> no, they don't. They lend on credit. <laughs> this is where that book, the, the book dates itself because that maybe happened in the past, but not anymore. But seldom on reputation alone, for they have learned that not all reputations are deserved. Mm. Ah, yeah. When considering a loan, a banker attaches great importance to three things. The borrower's ability to repay the loan. That's, that's really... 99% of it. I, I don't know what he's going to say next, but I mean, that's what bankers care about, money. Those guys have lots of money and they just want more. And they want your money. All of it. They won't stop till they get it. Uh, ability to repay. The borrower's credit history. That's the ability to repay. It's the same thing. Your credit history demonstrates to them your ability to repay. So it's, that's one thing. Uh, and the borrower's character. Now, Okay, I changed my 99% to 100%. Ability to repay is 100%. They do not look at character. They really don't give a shit about character. Some could argue your credit history shows your character. Really, it shows your ability to repay. That's what they care about. They want their money. They want their interest. And they'll get it. Uh, the first two considerations can be calculated mathematically, which is why they like it and rely on it. Uh, the third requires judgment and experience, which is why they don't do it. <laughs> so there you go. Prudent bankers have learned that persons of character are always a good risk because they take their obligations seriously, while those who spend their resources on the trappings of success should be avoided at all costs. Protect your good reputation as you would protect your home, your investments, and your life. Once shattered, a good reputation can only be regained by those who have developed the courage and willpower to persevere in the face of great odds. Yeah, okay, so I, I remark a lot when I'm reading this on how topical it is. You know, we're in the summer when Antifa was up to their hijinks, which nobody talked about, right? Everybody's losing their fucking mind because of the capital thing. Um, John Sullivan is the guy's name, by the way, from Utah, and he's been released on bail. Hmm. Interesting. Anyway, uh, yeah, everybody's losing their mind over the Capitol, except for John Sullivan. He's been released on Bell, the Antifa guy I talked about the other day. <coughs> he's special, so he, he's out of jail already after one day, two days. Um, but I often comment on how current it is, even though it's an old book that was written years ago. When I read Think and Go Rich, he, Napoleon Hill, you know, was writing it in the 30s, I think it was, or ni like 1910 or, the, or 20 or 30, I think it was 30s. Um, he would, when you go, when you move to a new city back in the 30s, you know, we're talking almost 100 years ago, you would get a letter from, of introduction from like a well-known person, like, the mayor of your old town or a prominent business person. So if you went from New York to Chicago, you'd get like a well-respected, well-known businessman in New York to write you a letter of introduction. So when you went to Chicago where nobody knew you, you were a stranger, you would show them this letter of introduction. Now in today's world of computer printers that print off money, <laughs> if they can get the right sort of paper, <laughs> uh, obviously letters of introduction aren't used anymore. Oh, hello. Hello, Tabadika. Good morning. Good morning. Mm -hmm. Nice mm -hmm. butt. Mm -hmm. What? You're checking for zits in the camera? Kill. Kill, kill? Okay. Go kill your zits. Uh, so, yeah, I, I mean, I, hell, I came up in the 80s and 90s and there wasn't letters of introduction. I don't think they were around in the 60s or 70s even. So that's old school. And when I was reading the book, I was like, letter of introduction. You know, it seemed weird that they would have done that back in the day. But, you know, obviously that's not <laughs> relevant today. <laughs> um, you know, you've got a, a resume you use for a new job. And 
references, which I guess is the modern day version of a letter of introduction from the, you know, a hundred years ago, 90 years ago. So yeah, I, you know, I'm not surprised out of 365 paragraphs, uh, so far only one is really just not with the times. Um, because, or, or you know, you know where there might be a banker like that that he was talking about in a small town in the Midwest somewhere, like you know where they have a, a instead of a regional bank or a national bank, instead of you know Wells Fucko or Bank of Blowjob America, um, the sucky shitty multinational corporations that that run everything. Like it's just you know the farmers bank or the you know the the bank of whatever some small town in Iowa or whatever, there where the banker knows the people you know because he's he lives among the, he's a citizen of the the small town or village or whatever you want to call it, that might apply to them but there's very few of those because the big banks keep gobbling them up because they have an insatiable appetite for money and power. So there's not many of the mom and pop banks left, just like there's not many mom and pop hardware stores. They've all been replaced with Home Depot and Lowe's, and there's not mom and pop butchers and whatnot. They've been replaced by the huge supermarkets, including Walmart. And um, you know, the general store used to be a thing in small towns like that. You'd have the general store where you go to buy your clothes or whatever, and Walmart's blown them out too. They've eaten up all the mom and pops like a Pac-Man eating up dots. You know, just like I said, insatiable. Walmart can't get big enough. They're huge and they're bloated and they sell Chinese crap and make the Chinese rich, so now they're buying up America. Bill Gates is buying up farmland in Oklahoma because he wants to help people, that's why. So, and the Chinese are buying up a lot of land too, all because people shop at Walmart and put out little small mom and pops. <laughs> it's all good. Positive mental attitude. Go to your go to your local bank at City your banker at Citibank or J P Morgan Chase who doesn't know you, and ask for a loan based on your reputation. Let me know how that goes.